And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king which ye have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king that ye have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. If you don't mind this morning, I would like to change the scriptures to accommodate the circumstances surrounding America this Tuesday. Is that all right with everybody? And ye shall cry out in that day because of your queen, which ye have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Our Father, we love you. We want to thank you and praise you for allowing us to be here today and in your house and in your presence. I pray that you would bless the reading and the preaching of your word. Give us clarity of thought, wisdom to preach, and knowledge. And I ask you, God, to use the scriptures to illuminate our hearts this morning. We'll be careful to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Verse number 18, Ye shall cry in that day because of your king, which ye have chosen you. And in that day the Lord will not hear you. Here's the title of the message this morning. America must vote with vigilance. America must vote with vigilance. Let me say at the forefront of the message this morning before we get into Isaiah 59 that the last eight years in American history... The last eight years has just about blown out the very lights of hope, optimism, ambition, aspiration in America. Matter of fact, America at this point in time in our history is at a critical time. Matter of fact, it's more critical now than it's ever been in American history. And America has got a choice on Tuesday. We've come to the crossroads, and I really believe with all of my heart that America has come to the crossroads of either life or death. It's either life or death on Tuesday. I believe that with all of my heart. I know that we have an American Congress. I know that we have a Senate. But I also am aware of the fact that we have a Supreme Court. And that is what is up for stakes at this moment in time in our history is the Supreme Court justices and the seats that will be filled by the next sitting president of the United States of America. And ye will cry out to the Lord and because of the king or the queen of your choice and in that day the Lord will not hear you. And I promise you beyond, the, beyond any shadow of doubt that America after this election, whether a Democrat or whether a Republican wins, calamity will come to this nation. Hard times may visit our land. Whether it's through an economic collapse through the stock market, they don't even call it a collapse anymore. They change the wording so it don't scare people. They call it a correction now. But the Federal Reserve has propped up the stock market for the last eight years and poured money into the stock market. The bubble's eventually going to bust and it'll be worse than the 2008 levels. And no Democrat or Republican will be able to fix the economic collapse that is coming to America. Even some people are predicting right now as I stand in this pulpit that on Tuesday there will be some type of civil unrest in the United States of America over who we choose to be president. We don't know what the future holds, but I'm glad to know as a Bible believer we know who holds the future. Can I get a witness this morning? Whether it's an economic collapse or whether it's a natural disaster, we don't know what may come to America. And it could even be wars and rumors of wars, for we know that in the last days these things must come to pass. 
And when these hard times come and when America falls to her knees like she did on September the 11th, and once again our churches will fill up with people and once again the altars will fill up with prayers of the saints of God and they'll go up to heaven and heaven won't pick up the phone. We'll pray to God, but I, but First Samuel eight eighteen said we our prayers will go up to God because of the queen that we've chosen or the king that we've chosen. God will not hear our prayers. Ye shall cry out in that day, but because of the king or the queen that we've chosen, the Lord will not hear us in that day. Here's my question this morning. Why in the world could we as a people, why in the world could Israel as a people ever come to the place in their nation and their time and history and get to a place that where God himself would rather choose not to hear their prayers of mercy and he would reject their prayers of peace? Why in the world would God turn a deaf ear to a people? And the answer is found in Isaiah chapter number 59. America this Tuesday must vote with vigilance. And I say to you more so now than ever. I want to read a few verses to you this morning out of Isaiah 59. The Bible said the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Aren't you glad this morning God's willing to save and God's willing to hear? The problem is verse number two, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. For your hands are defiled with blood your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath murmured perverseness. None calleth for justice. Boy, we're seeing that right now, aren't we? Nor any pleadeth for truth. Man, I'm reading the headline news. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and they bring forth iniquity. Are you aware of the fact that God this morning, his hand is not shortened? In other words, we don't serve a God who's handicapped. God is not handicapped this morning. And the Bible said that he's not deaf to where he can't hear. So God is still able to hear and God is still able to save. But America and her sins will one day separate us from God in our answered prayers to a thrash holy God. What sins could possibly separate a nation from God? Or let me ask the question like this. What type of king or what type of queen could we choose as a people and as a country and as a nation that would hinder our prayers to God? He tells us in three simple phrases. Are you ready? Number one, what could hinder our prayers to God would be bloody hands. For your hands are defiled with blood. Can I tell you that on January the 22nd, 1973, one of the awfulest days recorded in our American history, nine men dressed in black robes sitting on a Supreme Court ruled in Roe versus Wade and they decided that the hands of Americans could shed the innocent blood with no interference by politicians or a court of law. Are you aware of the fact that since they passed that law that the numbers have even reached 4,000 abortions per day in the United States of America alone? In 2015, 1.2 million little babies died at the hands of doctors and nurses in this land that we call the United States of America. Honey, there's a blood of river that's flowing through our streets there's a blood there's a river of blood that's flowing through Washington 
D.C. from the New York Harbor to the San Francisco Bridge where we're reaching into the wombs of mamas and we're reaching in and grabbing out innocent babies and we're taking their life in the name of women's rights. Can I tell you something, honey? That baby has no rights. That baby has no say-so. And we're living in a generation and a day and an age where if you go out and kill a whale, bless God, you'll serve 20 years in prison, but you can jerk a baby from its mother's womb and flush it down a toilet and nobody will say nothing about it and the politicians will look the other way and the preachers will say it's a political issue. Honey, America will stand before God and answer for the babies they have murdered in our abortion clinics. Bloody hands will separate you from the voice of God. We have a candidate running for president right now for those that are still breathing. We've got a candidate running for president right now that said gun violence is killing our children. And we must do something to take the guns to protect our children. I thought, man, that must be bad. My Lord, the numbers have to be at least five to six, seven thousand children, teenagers every day for us to take the guns away. Are you aware of the fact that last year, I don't know if the Democratic Party knows this or not, but I'd like to inform them this morning that last year, 2,624 children were killed due to gun violence. Almost 85% of those deaths occurred in the strictest gun, strict law, the most strictest gun state in America, in the streets of Chicago, Illinois, where there is a total ban on guns, but yet that's where they're dying, that's where they're falling dead in the street, and last year the grand total was 2,600 and 24 kids. That's how many died last year because of gun violence. But yet they want to tell you they're for the kids. But yet they, re- they say they really care about the kids. Honey, if you really cared about the kids, you'd leave our stinking guns alone and you would defund Planned Parenthood so fast it'd make your nose bleed. I'm telling you right now that we found out through undercover video through Project Veritas that they're bragging about selling and body parts of those precious children that they ripped from their mother's womb. They're selling their body parts for profit. They're wanting to buy Lamborghinis and sports cars with the parts they ripped from their mother's womb. I'm telling you we better vote with vigilance on Tuesday this year. We better vote with vigilance because bloody hands will separate us as an Americans from a God that will no longer hear our prayers. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. I could preach an hour and a half. Notice what the scripture says. For your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, and your lips have spoken lies. Number two, write this down. Here's what will separate America from God come this Tuesday if we don't vote with vigilance. Not only bloody hands, but lying lips. Lying lips. I'm going to tell you something what God says about liars. Revelation 21, 8. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. You know what the Bible says about the devil? He is the father of all lies. You say, has our government lied to us? Well, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. You know what Gruber said, don't you? It's the ignorance and the stupidity of the American people that we can pass such crazy laws in America. Is everybody all right? Is everybody all right? 
And I'm going to tell you something. The Democrats are just as guilty as the stinking Republicans. Because every bit of that law was funded under a Republican-held Congress and a Republican-held Senate and passed by Democratic President Barack Hussein Obama. And if you, know what, if you want to know what he stands for, just look at his middle name, Hussein. And that should explain everything you need to know. Amen right there. Lying lips. They call it the Affordable Care Act. Nancy said, affordable, 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 affordable. I saw the news conference. Affordable, affordable. You know what she's doing? She was lying with her lips. One of my favorite commercials that is playing right now on television is the commercial between uh, Congressman Trey Gowdy in South Carolina and the FBI Director James Comey. When Trey Gowdy had the FBI Director on the stand, he asked him about four questions and they're playing it over and over again on Fox Business. I watch it all, I memorized it so I wrote it down. I'm talking about lying lips. He said this, he said, Secretary Clinton said there was nothing marked classified in her emails, either sent or received. Is that true or false? The director said, no, that's false. She said, I did not email any classified material to anyone. Is that true or false? And he said, it's false. She said, I've only used one device. The director called me and said she had multiple devices. She said, all work-related emails was always turned over to the State Department. Turned over to the State Department. Is that true or false? He said, no, that's false. Lying lips. Lying lips. Lying lips. Bloody hands and lying lips. We better vote with vigilance. Pop star singer Farrell Williams. Some of y'all probably know him. Sad fella. Pharrell Williams said this this past week. He justified Hillary Clinton. He justified the lies. He said this. He said, everybody lies. <laughs> you know what the problem with that statement is? He's right. <laughs> everybody lies. Even the right wing and the left wing and the middle wing, they all lie to the American people. And News Daily says this, that America has a growing decline of basic honesty. Our children are told there's such a thing as global warming. My hind leg. They had their conference this past year down in the Keys or somewhere in the Bahamas in the Caribbean. This past year, they had their global warming conference and for the first time in recorded history, it snowed while they were there. <laughs> they, they, they tried to have the meeting as close to the equator as possible, but there's a God in heaven and said, you're a bunch of liars. God help us this morning. Global warming. And then they, when they realized that we didn't want to swallow that lie, they called it climate change. Can I tell you something, good neighbor? All you got to do is live in the state of Georgia and you can experience climate change every day of the week. <laughs> I turn my heater on going to work in the mornings and in the evenings I've got the air condition on and it won't blow cold enough. And I get up in the morning and need a fireplace and by that evening I need the air condition. That's why I'm so stinking sick. It's because of climate change. Say man, right there. You know I'm telling the truth. I may be from Cornelia, but I ain't stupid. And we forced our children to believe in the thought of millions of years. Can I tell you something? Millions of years in global warming and climate change, it's just as real as Mickey Mouse himself. And you've almost got to live in a Disney world to actually believe the lie. What will separate us from God?
What kind of leader would separate us from God? I'll tell you the kind of leader that would separate us from God. A leader with bloody hands. A leader with lying lips. I'm not calling any names out here. How about a leader, verse number four, with a heinous heart? None calleth for justice. <laughs> I mean, do you really want me to start right here? Do you really want me to deal with it? For none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity, they speak lies, they conceive mischief, and they bring forth iniquity. That's a heinous heart. Are you aware of the fact only in America can you run for president under FBI investigation? We better vote with vigilance. Only in America, it don't matter if your husband is a rapist or a sexual predator. Only in America, it don't matter if you have a body count that's followed you for almost 30 years. It don't matter if you have secret lesbian affairs. Only in America, it don't matter that if the same country that supported Al-Qaeda and gave money to ISIS and supports you financially, you can still run for president. Only in America. It don't matter if a rap star opens up your rally with filthy language and a cursing mouth. It don't matter. It don't matter if you cheat and get the debate questions before the debate. It don't matter. You're still able to run for president. Is it, is it, is it just me in here or is it, is it hot? Isaiah 520. You don't have to turn down. I'm going to read it for you. Isaiah 520. I thought I'd chase this one rabbit right here this morning while we're here in Isaiah anyway. Isaiah 520 says this. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Amen. We better vote with vigilance. Woe unto them that put darkness before light. We better vote for vigilance. We better, hey, we better vote for vigilance. Woe unto them that put bitterness before sweet and sweet for bitter. Can I ask you a question? How did we as an American society get to this point? We've got two candidates running for president. How in the world could we ever as a society get to the point to where we're at now? Because I just told you what's going to separate us from God come Tuesday. It's going to be those with bloody hands, those with lying lips, and those with a heinous heart. What is it that got us to the point to where we could vote for someone like that? Let's look at verse number five. The Bible said in verse number five that they hatch, this word here is translated viper. They hatch viper eggs. Snake eggs. And they weave the spider's web. And he that eateth of their eggs dieth. That, and that which is crushed breaketh into a viper. Is everybody all right? Here, here's, here's how we got to the point where we're at in America right now. Write this down. Number one, we've got here by consuming a plate of poison. America has had a steady diet of snake eggs for the past 30 years. Matter of fact, these devilish eggs are being hatched in our day and they're served on the plates and the platters of Americans and the eggs of poisons have hatched materialism. The eggs of, po of poison have hatched humanism and liberalism and atheism and evolutionism and new ageism and our children are forced to eat the poison in our public schools on a day-to-day -day basis. Why? In God's name, do you think we've got to this point? We've been eating snake eggs. Poison. We've had a plate of poison. You don't believe me? In 1962, the Supreme Court ruled that prayer was going to be out of schools. Now, your children are forced to go to these public schools. Your children have to attend these schools. But then when they get there, they can't pray. 1962. In 1963, the Supreme Court dismantled Bible reading in classes. 
Bible reading. We've exchanged Bibles for bullets. Prayer for condoms and contraception. Makes me stinking sick. A child goes to the nurse, the school nurse. All they got to do is ask for an, if, if they need an aspirin, you know what they make them do? You got to go home. You got to call your mom or dad to get an aspirin. You got to get a signed note by a legal guardian before the teacher can administer an aspirin. But yet a 15-year-old girl can end up pregnant and if she wanted to, she could go legally in this country and have an abortion and her parents never know what she's done. Are you kidding me? It's a double standard. In 1980, the Ten Commandments were declared, listen to this, unconstitutional by the same Supreme Court. In 1982, the year that I was born, creation for the first time was kicked out of our schools. They said, we shouldn't be teaching that lie to the young people of America. And we've tre- we've cre- we, we kicked creation out and exchanged it for it all happened by accident. A big bang, we're all here. I once was a monkey hanging from a tree, and now I'm a doctor with a PhD. Herman Cain would ask this morning if he was here in this service, he said, and they think we're stupid. I'm going to tell you something. America has had a plate of poison for the last 30 years. No wonder we're in the mess we're in. Notice not only are they eating, not only are they eating viper eggs. I'm trying to hurry this morning. The Bible says, and they weave the spider's web. Can I tell you something? Not only has America ate a plate of poison, we've gotten to the place where we're at today with the candidates that we have today because America has been wrapped up in a web of wretchedness. The spider weaves its web. If you look at spiders, they weave a web that is almost invisible. You can't see it. And it hangs out there and it's waiting for something to come along and get stuck and it's real sticky. And once you get in the web, you can't get out of the web. And then along comes the spider and he drops down and he wraps you up in more of that web and then he puts his venom in the victim of the prey and then he sucks that prey dry. Are you aware of the fact since 2000 America has been wrapped up in a world wide web? Yeah, it's invisible. It's out in the airways. We call it WWW, World Wide Web, and the World Wide Web. I'm telling you, it's got some great uses and some wonderful uses, but I'm on the other side. It's a satanic tool of the devil, for he is the prince and the power of the airway, and the World Wide Web is very, very dangerous in this day and age in which we live. Can I tell you something? Porno- pornography. And and pornography is just one click away at the fingertips of the young people of America. Adultery is just one email away. Fornication is just one text away. One picks away. Can I tell you something this morning? Dr. Sammy Allen said it years ago. He said, if you ever get on the internet, he said, you've done dropped into the net. You ever, get, you ever get internet, you done dropped into the net. Can I tell you that right now we have got a society, you thought it was bad when y'all were kids? You thought it was bad when you were in school? Man, they've got access to anything now with no filter. Some of the most goriest stuff, some of the most perverted things that anyone could ever let go through their eye gate or their ear gate, I'm telling you, is on a device in their front pocket. And I believe with all of my heart that the internet has had an effect on America. And we've become more and more dissent. You know, newspapers came out. Preachers used to preach against newspapers. You ought not be reading some of that stuff. (laughs) 
Then they had radio come out and preachers said, bless God, you better not be listening to that wicked stuff on the radio. Then all of a sudden they figured out how to get it on that one-eyed devil you put in your living room, the television set. And they said, bless God, you ought to go in there and kill that one-eyed devil. Blow him up. I know one preacher, as soon as they came out with the TV, he went through his house and threw away every microwave he had. He said, I don't even want a resemblance of a TV in my house. And he was throwing the microwave in the trash can. Hey, say amen right there. Get rid of the microwave. It looks too much like a television. And then cable came along. And then all of a sudden, something happened that has never happened in our history. The internet. Snapchat. Twitter. It used to be MySpace. And then Facebook. My Lord. Now we have access to any knowledge we want. And man, that's so powerful in this day. But I'm going to tell you the difference between truth and between facts. Facts you can have a lot of, but truth is, you can't double truth. You can double your facts, but you can't double truth. And that's what we've done in America. We've trampled the truth. I want to look at verse number 12. Watch what the Bible says. I'm done. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. As for our iniquities, we know them. In transgression and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Anybody ever heard of Black Lives Matter? transgressing and lying and looting and rioting in the streets and speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart the words of falsehood. Verse 14, here we are. And judgment is turned away backward. <laughs> judgment is turned away backwards. And justice, it standeth afar off. I'm reading the headline news, y'all. I thought this Bible was old and out of date. I thought this thing was written over 2,000 years ago and it don't have no relevance in this day and hour in which we live. I'm reading the headline news in the streets of America right here out of Isaiah 59 and verse 14. Here it is, you ready? For truth is fallen in the street. Notice the traffic jam. And iniquity cannot, equity, equity, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. Can I read that one more time? And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. In other words, if you preach truth, and if you preach righteousness, and you preach what's right, and you shed light on an election, you're the one that's the bad guy. The Apostle Paul ran into that same problem. <laughs> where, where, where is it at brother Jason the apostle Paul said to the church he said am I therefore become your enemy the apostle Paul God's preacher man I mean a missionary an evangelist and one that loved the church and loved Jesus and loved people the apostle Paul said have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth You stand up for truth, you stand up for righteousness, you stand up for holiness, they'll throw eggs in your face. They'll throw you out in the street. They'll mock you, they'll ridicule you. You will become prey. When you call for justice and when you call for truth, you become the bad guy. You know why? Because there's a traffic jam in America. 
Justice, equity. They're trying to get through the streets and they're trying to move through the streets of America. Justice wants to prevail and it's trying to move through the streets. But the problem is somebody had a meeting in the back of an airplane with the Department of Justice on behalf of his wife and they all they talked about was golf and the grandkids for 45 minutes. God help us. There's a traffic jam. Justice can't prevail. Why? Because truth has been kicked over. Truth has fallen over and truth is laying in the street prostrate. And equity and justice can't get in. My God in heaven, we've gotten to the place in our society where we've got a candidate wanting to run for office with lying lips, bloody hands, and a heinous heart because we in America, and it's the church's fault, we've stood up and we've trampled and we've kicked over the truth and we don't care what thus saith the Lord no more. It's our way or the highway and we've kicked God to the curb. We've kicked the truth out of our classrooms. We've kicked the truth out of our courtrooms. We've kicked the truth out of Washington, D.C. We've kicked the truth out of our homes. We've kicked the truth out of our churches. No wonder we're in the mess we're in. Got a lesbian running for president. God help this country. God help this country. I'm talking we better vote with vigilance this Tuesday. It's life or death. And we've allowed these stinking backslid doctors and these modern day philosophers and these fake politicians and we've allowed pagan preachers and liberal parents to turn around and kick over the truth and say it's man's word and not God's word and we've knocked over the truth and we've kicked it over and if you don't believe me, just look at our current situation in Washington, D.C. with the White House, the State Department and the the FBI and if everything goes to plan Tuesday this country will be in a constitutional crisis she'll have to pardon herself how do we fix it how do we fix it it's easy it's so easy how how many's heard that before it's easy it's just so easy you know there's only one candidate that's actually calling for law and order right now Republicans don't like him. Democrats don't like him. And the Pope has come out this morning and he said something about him. Would you believe that? The Pope. Who gives a flip what he believes? He's a Jesuit anyway. He shouldn't even be in there. I take a vote. We vote him out. Jesuit. Put in there. Look up in here. Pope coming out. Hey, there's only one person. There's only one person running for office right now that's been endorsed by the Border Patrol. And that's never happened before in our history. There are actually people that, thank God, hallelujah, there are some people that have sworn their allegiance to the United States Constitution and not some stinking politician or some dumb Democrat in Washington, D.C. or some backslid Republican. I'm glad there are some people that have got a badge on their chest and they're trying to uphold law and they're trying to uphold justice and they're supporting the man that's running for law and order and justice in this country country. Amen right there. It's easy. It's easy. All we got to do is put truth back on our feet. How is that possible, Brother Adam? Can I tell you this morning, God has left behind the word of truth. Woo! This exceeds far higher than any constitution, any president of the United States of America, any foreign leader. The word of God is forever settled in heaven and in not one jot or tittle will it be removed. This word will stand. We've got the word of truth. But guess who I've got living inside of me this morning? I've got the spirit of truth. He's the Holy Spirit of God. The sweet presence of God lives and dwells in his believers. And guess what Paul told Timothy? Paul told Timothy that the church of the living God is the pillar and the ground of truth. 
All we need is the pulpits of America and the men of God of America, not the pagan preachers of our day, but the God called, God filled, God anointed preachers of our day to stand up and proclaim the word of truth in the power of the spirit of the truth behind the church pulpit, behind the pillar and the ground of the truth. The church needs to take a step. Man, the church right now, even if it's got a little light, will shine so bright because it's gotten so dark. It's gotten so bad. I'm telling you, man, people hadn't even, people coming to this country, they've never even heard about Jesus. You want to be a missionary? Go to Cornelia, Georgia. I guarantee I can run into some people today at Lowe's or Walmart. They wouldn't have a clue. They wouldn't have a clue what the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is about. America's turned into a mission field. You know what we've done as a whole, as a church? Man is coming. You know what we've done as a whole and as a church? We spend our time squashing snake eggs. Squashing snake eggs. You know, look, look, look what, I, I didn't read this. Look what it says, verse number six. The Bible, the Bible says this in verse number five. He that eateth the eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh into another viper. It don't matter if you crush these snake eggs. A viper will come out. We've been crushing snake eggs. You know what we've been doing in America? We've been knocking down spider webs. Are you aware of the fact this morning that truth is the only thing that can crush the snake and kill the spider? <laughs> you know what truth is? Truth is like food to the mouth. Truth is like light to your eyes. And truth is like melody to your ears. You know what we need to do in America? You know what we need to do? We need to love the truth. We need to live the truth. We better believe the truth. What I'm preaching today is not popular. We better know the truth. We better tell the truth. Because we are salt and we are light. I close with this verse this morning. Proverbs 23. Verse number 23. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. Proverbs 23, 23. Eric, if you can find it, I want you to put up big bold letters behind me on the screen. Proverbs 23, 23. You know what it says? By the truth... And sell it not. You know why Solomon said that you have to buy the truth? Because the truth comes with a price tag. You know why he said sell it not? Because once it comes with a price tag, then it must be preserved. Sell it not. For the first time in American politics, we have a candidate that's running for office that's not for sale. That's why it's so dangerous right now. Everybody that is in my lifetime, I'm 34 years old, everybody in my lifetime has been bought off and paid off and they sold this country down the drain. You know why the world leaders don't like who's running? You know why the world don't like who's running? Because for the first time, there's someone that's preaching and hollering nationalism, not globalism. America first. That's not such a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. We don't have to police everybody. We're to bring our troops home and let that place fall apart. If it falls apart, it falls apart. America first. You say, why in the world would you not be for a, glo a global enterprise and, and a global governance and a global dollar? Because, hey, that's what comes after the church is gone. A one world order and a one world dollar and a one world religion and a one world society.
Hey, it's here. We better vote with vigilance. I'm against that mess. America has paid the awful price for truth. We've paid it. In blood, we've paid the price for truth. And now it's up to my generation and your generation to preserve that truth and sell it not. Depending on how Tuesday turns out in this election, Brother Bill, we may be dealing for the next four years with snake eggs, spider webs, and traffic jams. America had better vote this Tuesday in all villages. We better be vigilant for the hour has come. Let's stand together this morning. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the sweet Holy Ghost. Thank you for this service. God, as we go to the polls this week, I pray for this country. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who's going to attack, who's going to get mad. I don't know if there will be civil unrest this week. But I do know this, God, that you already know the outcome. You already know how this nation is going to decide to go forward. It is our hope and it is our prayer that Americans will vote with vigilance and have the facts before they go to the poll. Because God, we don't need a nation eating any more snake eggs, killing spider webs, and having truth falling in the street causing a traffic jam. Bless your word. Bless this service. In Jesus' name. Oh